good morning everyone i welcome you in the virtual classroom of business environment we are discussing our second unit that is liberalization privatization and globalization out of this three component of lpg policy we have completed liberalization and we have also started privatization and up till now we have completed arguments in favor of privatization i am repeating again the meaning of privatization privatization simply means when public sector is sold to private sector then it is known as privatization we have also discussed three measures of privatization that are ownership measure second one is organizational measure and third one is operational measure in ownership measure we are selling shares and debentures of public sector to the private people in organizational measure we are transferring management of public sector to the private sector and ownership will be retained by the government and in operational measure the motive the actions are directed towards increasing the efficiency of public sector so these are the three ways of privatization ownership measure organizational measure and operational measure now let us discuss arguments against privatization means why privatization is bad the first argument against privatization is private sector is inefficient to see in arguments in favor of privatization the first argument we have seen is the small performance of public sector means public sector are quite inefficient they are loss making and due to loss making public sector we should promote private sector but here it is written that it is not compulsory that only public sectors are inefficient only public sectors are running into losses there are so many private sector who to run into losses they are also inefficient so let us discuss in detail the first first argument written here is there are some good number of pscs means public sector enterprise that are not loss making enterprise instead some of them generate revenues too if pscs are allowed to grow in an independent way managers of this enterprise are expected to respond according to the change requirements see uh, as we have discussed earlier that public sector enterprise are inefficient why they are inefficient because of the interference of government but it is not like that that all the public sectors are inefficient see ongc is there ioc indian oil corporation is there ntpc mtnl vsnl so many public enterprises are there who are earning too good revenue to the government see there are called nine gems of government see this nine companies are earning very good profit for the government and what government has done government has sold this profit earning public sector to the private sector so it is not like that the all the public sectors are earning losses some public sectors on too good revenue if all the public sector are allowed to operate in an independent manner means decision should be taken by the staff of the public sector they have the autonomy they have the responsibility they have authority on their own to work then definitely they will respond to the change environment see what happened in the india that public sectors are rigid they are running in a old and outdated system why public like private sector because they are always modern one if you go to the office of private bank then you will like the infrastructure whereas if you go to the public bank you will just not like the building of public sector so what generally happen is from 1950s what the system was developed to be operated in a public sector in a same system they are operating in 2020 as well though it has passed the 70 years so 
the total environment could change but public sector didn't change so why they are didn't change because of the rigidity and because of the public in governmental interference so if we let them free if we give them enough authority to operate in their own manner then definitely they will also become the modern one they will also become the ch they will also respond to the change environment and the loss making public sector can also be converted into a profit making public sector just the need is to give them enough autonomy secondly it is written that further there is no evidence that can change that can suggest that the indian private sector performs satisfactorily private sector is inefficient too yes it is not like that that only public sector runs into losses private sector also runs into losses and we haven't seen any evidence that public sector is equal to loss and private sector is equal to profit there is no such hard and fast rule there is no rigid rule like this even public sector may be profit making and private sector may be loss making during 1950 to 1990s india's private industrialist functioned under the protective umbrella without putting much effort in increasing factor productivity this industrialist felt no urgency in modernizing their industries they used old and obsolete technology which made this sector an inefficient one see the scenario is about from 1950 to 1990s means before adoption of liberalization privatization and globalization i earlier also told you that from 1950s we have adopted mixed economy but the mixture was more of socialism and less of capitalism means there was no globalization no foreign multinational companies were allowed to operate in india and licensing policy was in the operation means only few private public were allowed to do a business activity so the indian market was quite completely sheltered market who were doing business in the indian market they are guaranteed having business because of no competition from the foreign players and no competition from the domestic players why because the government was not issuing license easily to everyone so there was no competition at all the indian industrialists were performing in a quite sheltered manner so due to that reason in whatever way they want to they wanted to do the business in the same way they were doing business so when government has opened the economy in 1991 when government in welcome the foreign multinational companies our domestic companies our businessmen were failed to face the foreign competition i have discussed the case study in our first unit that is of bajaj automobile bajaj scooter has seen the mono monopoly for one more than one and half decade for continuous 15 years bajaj in india was having a monopoly he was like a crownless king in a indian market but when government has adopted the globalization hero honda entered in indian market and but not hero honda has only unseated bajaj from the first rank but hero honda became first ranker and bajaj was not able to survive in a market bajaj is a indian company and hero honda is a foreign merged company see what happened when indian companies are facing competition with the multinational companies why they didn't survive because they never face competition they were inefficient but no one was there before 1991 to told private sector as inefficient getting it so private sectors were also inefficient but we were not getting the point why they were inefficient then it is written that the in this industrialist felt no urgency in modernizing their industries yes definitely why bajaj not survived in a market because they were still producing scooter and hero honda has launched the bike in a market bajaj was using old and outdated technology when this modern technology was were introduced by the foreign multinational companies so 
the Indian industrialists were not facing any urgency for modernizing their industries. Then it is written that there is no statistical evidence that can show a positive relationship between ownership and performance. Yes, uh, see generally what we think that public sector is equal to efficient, uh, public sector is equal to inefficient and private sector means efficient but there is no such rule like this, there is no statistical evidence. In fact, performance is not to be related to the ownership of industries. What is needed is competitive environment in which any sector whether public sector or private sector can operate. See, efficiency or inefficiency doesn't depend on the ownership whether it is owned by government or it is owned by the private public. The performance, the efficiency depends on the competitive environment. If there is a competition then definitely every unit will be efficient and if there is no competition then every unit will be inefficient. Just like you can take your own example if you think that there will be no exam no one will read and your performance will naturally decline. Yes or no but if there is a, if there will be exam then you will be conscious about the competition whether I will be failed or I will get first rank there will be competition in the exam so due to exam you will excellent in your performance so this is a simple rule that it is only competition which increases the efficiency not the ownership so it is seldom to say that private sector is efficient and public sector is inefficient there is no such rule like that then second argument against privatization is there are uh, that is financial burden there are so many private industries that are lying sick sometimes private industrialists deliberately make their organization sick means non-profit making so that they can receive financial help from public sector institutions to tide over the crisis so what happens in the public sector if public sector runs into losses they will give on finance from the government but this is not only for the public sector in India even if the private sector is passing through the bad times means even they are non-profit making or they are incurring losses then also government will help them you must be knowing about subsidy you must be knowing about Khadi Bhandar. Take the example of Khadi Bhandar. See, Khadi Bhandar revived in this present situation in this 21st century just because of financial help provided by government. You must be knowing some of the cooperative societies as well who are not working very well, who are not earning profit. So it is government only who will come to their help and they will give them loan without any interest rate they will give them subsidy to revive in a market to survive in a market so it is well known to everyone in the india that if the private sector will feel sick means if the private sector is not earning enough profit or they are incurring losses then government will help them so what happened that some greedy industrialists they will feel that why to work hard why you want profit when not working hard and being sick we can get help from government then why to work hard so deliberately intentionally they make their organization loss making enterprise so that they can get financial help from their government but you know that to give financial help to anyone is not an easy task even government has taken loan from the IMF and the World Bank so they have to pay the interest so the whatever the amount a government is having that should be utilized for the development of country that should be utilized for the development of infrastructure instead government is giving loan to the private sector so the total money will be used for the non-productive purpose to give loan to give financial help to the loss making enterprise means to use our money for non productive purpose why because even after giving loan you are not sure that private sector will start earning profit so it will be a totally 
uh, wastage of money in helping private sector then third argument against privatization is infrastructures may not grow in abundance you must be knowing the definition of infrastructure all the basic facilities like education irrigation uh, transport facilities electricity water facility all the like they are included in infrastructure what they are saying that if we will have privatization then infrastructure will not be developed in country let us see what is written here economic growth crucially depends on the growth of infrastructure infrastructures both economic and social and economic growth are positively linked to each other so it is said that economic growth is totally dependent on infrastructure not on the number of industries we are having in the country see what happens we are having industries but we don't have road facilities then no transportation will happen yes or no so whatever the production is done in the factory will not be sold to the market and no profit on by the companies likewise if there is no good electricity facility is there then howsoever modern machinery you have installed in your plant if you don't have electricity facility it will be totally zero yes or no so total development of industry the total development of country depends on the infrastructure only if we are having very good water facility then and then some of the crops can be developed can be uh, uh, can be uh, in can be produced in a huge amount if we are having very good facility then and then only on the basis of electricity only the machinery is run the plants run if we are having very good transportation facility then it will be easy to supply to the market so totally the success of total commercial enterprise depends on the infrastructure only if there is a very good infrastructure there will be high growth if there is no infrastructure there will be low growth why some countries are known as underdeveloped country it doesn't mean that no foreign multinationals are going to the underdeveloped country but then why they remain as underdeveloped country because multinational companies go there they produce superior quality product but they don't get infrastructure facility they don't get transportation to supply in a market they don't get electricity facility to start a production they don't get a banking facility to expand their business so any country remains underdeveloped because of their infrastructure only if you are having very good infrastructure your country will be developed country if you are having very weak infrastructure your country will be underdeveloped country since infrastructure investments are lumpy in character private capital shies away from such investments and thrives on state support infrastructure see why infrastructure will not grow in privatization because infrastructures are always those area which requires huge investment you just take the example of road to build a road a you know, investment run into into crores of rupees and to invest such a big amount of capital is not cup of tea of private sector yes or no and secondly even if they manage to invest the road will not give return in just one or two year it will not start giving return in one or two year your capital will be returned only your capital will be returned back in 20 to 25 years and after 20 to 25 years you will start earning profit so no any private sector is having that much passion to wait for such a longer period to earn profit so they will never go for production of they will never go for the development of infrastructural activity so to build a road will be the responsibility of government to set up a power plant will be a responsibility of government to build a dam bridge will be a responsibility of government because private sector will not go in that area therefore 
move towards greater and greater privatization means country's slow and haphazard growth of infrastructural facility means if we totally depend on privatization if we remove public sector totally from the economy then definitely there will be no development infrastructure on the in the country we need to have public sector for the growth of infrastructure then the fourth argument is public interest there are many industries which perform an important public service for example healthcare education and public transport in these industries the profit motive should not be the primary objective of firms and their industry see there are so many services in economy is there where which should be run according to the social objective not as a profit motive you just take an example of healthcare education and public transport focus on the healthcare suppose we are having a private hospital you must have an uh, experience of private hospitals that they are charging too high fees that sometimes of people cannot afford you just take an example of present situation of this corona pandemic in government hospital government gives free facility for the treatment of corona patient whereas if you go to the private hospital they are charging 40 lakh to 50 lakh depending on the city and depending on the building and the infrastructure they are having within the hospital see what a huge difference zero rupee for the corona patient and on the other hand 40 to 50 lakh for the same corona patient how much difference is there and you, you just assume that if we are having only private hospital in india what will happen the poor will not even imagine to feel sick and to take the medical facilities they will they cannot even dream of yes or no so such facilities which should be run on the basis of social objective in that sector if we will have a privatization it will be totally uh, you know like uh, having a sunk ship you just take example of education as well no doubt we are having a very bad system in uh, public schools in the government schools but in some private school also just because they are having good system it doesn't mean they can charge too high fees you know in india even the fees of first standard student is running in one lakh rupees you just imagine first standard student fees is one lakh rupees and in government school they are having zero rupee you know just compare the difference one lakh rupees and the zero rupees what a huge difference education education facility should not be such costly or for the organ uh, for the people if we will have only private schools then poor people poor people's children will never get education and the country will be having a rich class uh, only educated class and poor class as a non-educated class then third one is public transport thank god that we are having railway that uh, is providing transportation facilities so cheaply if we are having only private sector then uh, even they will charge the highest ticket rates you can compare the bus fare of the private sector of the private transport company and the st in railway we don't have any other option so you cannot compare but in road transportation you can compare the fare of our public transport and our private transport there is a huge gap in the fare so what happened is that some facilities are there which should not be privatized all in all we can select this second it is written that for example in case of healthcare, it is feared privatizing health care would mean a greater priority is given to the profit rather than patient's care. What happened that uh, suppose they are having two patients in a private hospital, from one patient they can charge whatever amount they want to charge. The patient is ready to give 40 lakh or 50 lakh, then they will give treatment to this rich patient only and if that poor patient will die, then they will let him die because he did not have money to 
pay this is such an unfair practice this is such an unethical practice so there should not be privatization in essential service like healthcare education and transportation the next argument against privatization is problem of regulating private monopolies what do you mean by private monopoly simply means any industry where only single seller is there means there will be no competition and if there is no competition seller will definitely exploit consumer so if we are having private monopoly then they will uh, build the mountain of profit and they will keep exploiting people here it is written private monopoly private monopoly is always bad for the society whereas public monopoly is always good for the society you can take the example of railway railway is having monopoly but it is public monopoly public monopoly is always for the benefit of society whereas private monopoly is always hazardous to the society what is written here privatization creates private monopolies such as water companies and rail companies this need regulating to prevent abuse of monopoly power therefore there is still need for government regulation similar to under state ownership see you just take an example of telecommunication companies in india we are having few telecommunication companies that you can count on your finger like jio is there airtel vodafone idea and bsnl if we just take an example of these five companies jio vodafone airtel idea and bsnl bsnl is a public sector and rest four companies are private sector see what will happen if bsnl will be out of market there will be only private sector yes or no now what this private sector will do they will merge with merge to each other means these four companies will can be converted into one company and after conversion into one company there will be only company who will provide telecommunication service so whatever charge they want to have from the public they can so if we bsnl will survive in a market even if this four company will get together to form one company they has to face competition with bsnl and in that situation they cannot charge the highest price from the customers so what uh, what the logic here is that private sector should not allow to run freely in a market that need to have interference of government to control the monopoly see we know that bsnl is running into losses huge losses but why it still required to be in a market because of bsnl other companies will not do merger and they will not charge high price you already know that vodafone and idea has done merger if the situation still continues then there may be merger of other companies and telecommunication industry will be having only one company which may have a monopoly which will be very much hazardous to the indian population because telecommunication is something which is uh, our daily requirement yes or no so privatization into such essential facilities and private monopoly is always hazardous to the society private monopoly should be controlled by government then sixth argument against privatization is peripheral social responsibility private sector is completely guided by the profit motive this sector will invest in those areas that yield quick return the low priority industry above all social responsibility or welfare objective of business is sidelined by private industrialist definitely this point we have discussed at the time of infrastructure facility as well that public uh, private sector will always invest into those area which is high profit making and they will never invest into those area which is low profit making now i am just changing the category you just take the example of two goods one is a luxurious goods and second is a essential good now you just determine the profitability 
in luxurious goods profitability will be always high and in the essential goods in the needy goods profitability will be always low so if we will have a privatization private industries will only go for the luxurious goods and they will never go for this uh, essential goods uh, you just take the example whether to produce milk or to produce liquor you know in milk there is a lot of hard work you need to have the animals at your home you need to take care and investment is required you know hard work is there but to produce liquor one a particular type of plant is required and in as compared to the hard work it will give you a huge revenue Yes or no? So if only privatization will be there, then there will be no milk producer and only liquor producer. Now you just imagine what will be the society without milk and full of liquor. Definitely it will be an unethical society, not livable society. Yes or no? You just take the example, another example that uh, crop any crop you can take the example of pasmati like rice is there wheat is there and take the example of this pizza uh, let us change our example that you want to start a restaurant business in restaurant if we compare the essential good is roti and sabji and the luxurious good is pizza you know that by selling roti and sabji you will definitely earn less profit but by selling pizza you will be earning highest profit yes or no so if privatization will be there then there will be no roti and sabji manufacturer and only pizza manufacturer pizza provider will be there so what will be the society private sector will always go for the luxurious commodity not for the essential commodity but in society the priority should be given first to the needy commodity essential commodity and secondly if resources time and energy is there then you can go for production of luxurious commodity otherwise not then seventh argument against privatization is danger of employment loss yes definitely in privatization private sector will have a profit motive profit can be on high if your cost will be less if your when your cost will be less when you will pay less salary when you will pay less salary if you are having less employees yes or no so generally what happened in a private sector that they are exploiting their employees uh, the task that can be performed by two employees they will take from one employee so the workload will be more and salary will be less so this is known as a exploitation of employees see what is written here employment loss seems to be another argument against privatization as far as present employment scenario is concerned you can compare in this present situation only that in this corona pandemic period uh, due to this uh, private organizations are earning less profit they are retrenching their employees in private sector there is no job guarantee at any point of time they can fire the employees and if they will fire the employees it will increase the unemployment in a country secondly it is written that in the name of more and more profit private industrialists have adopted higher and higher policy of employment as well as labor saving technologies see the motive of private sector is to earn highest profit now to earn highest profit again i am repeating that your cost must be low when your cost will be low when you are paying less salary now you just compare that basically there are three categories of worker one is unskilled worker second is semi-skilled worker and third one is skilled worker so generally what will happen unskilled labor will charge the less wages so all the time they will recruit unskilled workers in the less wages after having some time when they will get skilled and when they will charge high wages they will be fired from the job again they will again they will recruit the unskilled labor again they will pay 
less salary so what these factories are doing they are happy with unskilled workers by paying less salary by doing higher and higher policy now secondly what companies are doing instead of hiring workers not to hire worker at all when you can do the work with machinery then why to give job to the worker and you know that uh, production technologies are of two type one is capital intensive technology and second is labor intensive technology labor are all labor intensive technology is always costlier technology because labor can produce less as compared to machines machines can produce more in less time period so it can it will be cheap affair as compared to labor intensive technology so companies either will work with the unskilled employees or they will do cap or they will use capital intensive technologies which is known as labor saving technology in that case no one will get job and unemployment will increase then it is written that further the private businessmen exploit workers in many forms like extending working hours or increasing working workload sabotaging the power of the workers to negotiate with the employers etc all this impact on wages and community inequality thus gets widened see what is written here that private businessman always exploits worker in what way private businessman can exploit first one is extending working hour you know you just compare the working hour of government bank and a private bank in government bank the working hour is of 6 to 7 hours and in private bank it is 10 to 12 hours and in 6 to 7 hours generally they used to work for 4 to 5 hours so it will be totally double than the private sector in public sector you can imagine half workload half timing and in private sector there will be more timing you just imagine that in public sector 4 hours are there and in private bank 8 hours are there so what happened in public sector they need two people 4 hours plus 4 hours whereas in private sector they just need one people because two persons task can happen can be done in 8 hours by one employee only and so no so what they will do just to take uh, just to hire less number of employees they will extend working hours then secondly increasing the workload yes uh two employees task has to be taken from one employee that is increasing the workload then sabotaging the power of the worker to negotiate with employers means uh employee employees are not at all given chance to negotiate their salary with the employers whatever the salary employer will offer in that salary they need to work that is sabotaging the negotiation power by this way workers will always get less salary and which will result into income inequality employers will become richer and richer and employees will become poorer and poorer so this is all about argument against privatization and now we are moving towards privatization in india see arguments in favor and against privatization is not available in your textbook so that i have given in detail in this ppt but privatization in india is given into your textbook so i have just written points here in 2002 all other industries were allowed to be privatized except only three see In two thousand two, all the industries were allowed to be privatized except only three. What do you mean by privatization? Means all the public sectors are sold to the private sector, or to allow private sector to enter into the area where public sectors are working. But in two thousand two, now only three areas are reserved for the public sector. Take the example of railway. In that also, private people are not allowed. In defense equipment also, private people are not allowed. So that necessary three areas are reserved for the public sector. In all other sector, private industries can enter. In public sector, this investment was initiated. See, uh, this investment was. initiated how privatization happens in india by doing disinvestment of public sector now the word disinvestment may be new to you the word disinvestment 
see disinvestment is the opposite of investment investment simply means giving capital to the organization whereas disinvestment means taking back our capital from the organization suppose you have invested 100 rupees by purchasing shares of any company now suppose you are selling your shares to the company to the company back and you take your 100 rupees back then it is known as a disinvestment getting it so what happened in a public sector initially government has invested in a public sector now government is taking its investment back so it is known as a disinvestment when government sells the shares of public sector to the private sector by selling the shares government is getting the capital back so it is known as a disinvestment of public sector so how privatization happens in india by allowing private sector to enter in a public sector means totally set up new sector which is according which is like public sector only then allowing then selling public sector to the private sector these are the two ways in which we have done privatization in india now there is written that two motive of privatization are that one is token privatization and second is deficit privatization here i have written motive of privatization the first is token privatization See what is token privatization? Some percentage of shares of public sector is sold to private sector without any intention. See, just because government wants to increase privatization in India, wants to motivate privatization in India, government is selling public sector to private sector. No any hidden intention is there in token privatization then in deficit privatization what happens public sector is sold to reduce fiscal deficit see hidden intention is fiscal deficit what is fiscal deficit you know that government need to prepare budget every year and government mostly prepares deficit budget what do you mean by deficit budget when the income of government is less and the expense is more the result is known as deficit you just take your own example if you are earning less and spending more you are running into losses but government cannot run into losses government run into deficit so when government's income is less and government spending is more than budget in budget there will be deficit so that deficit they need to pull out suppose government requires one lakh crore of rupees because government has spent more and on less so gap is spending is more one lakh crore of rupees so how they will get this one lakh crore of rupees by selling public sector to private sector so from this investment when they are selling the shares they are getting the capital back that capital they will set off the gap of budget so that is known as to reduce fiscal deficit then from 1991-92 to 2007-8, only 8.9% disinvestment has been done. We are talking about privatization from 1991, but if you see the pros progress of privatization, then it is too much slow. More than 10 years, you just uh, assume that it is 15 years. That in 15 years, only 8.9% privatization is done only 8.9 percent public sector are sold to private sectors government has privatized nine profit making private sectors oh, sorry public sectors that are here it is public sector that are ioc ongc hpcl bpcl ipcl vsnl bail sale and ntpc see these nine companies are known as nine gems of public sector nine gems of government all these nine companies are earning a huge profit to the government but what government has done government has sold this profit making organization to the private sector and government has retained the loss making private or uh, public or sector in their own hand like bsnl is there 
and Air India is there. No doubt the process is going on in this present situation to sell Air India and BSNL but no one is ready to purchase. Why? Who will ready to purchase loss making organization? Yes or no? So government is not at all benefited from the Air India and BSNL whereas this nine organization are giving benefit to India Go benefit to the government government has sold it off so what kind of decision it is whether we should consider it as a good decision or bad decision definitely it is a bad decision because government loses the sources of revenue getting it now Development of business and industries in organized sector. First of all, you must know the meaning of organized sector. Who are organized sector? Organized sectors are those sectors in which registration of business is done and over which rules and regulation of government is applicable. Registered and recognized by government and rules and regulation of government is applicable those sectors are known as organized sector you just take an example suppose rbi decides the lending rate means interest rate uh, what interest rate they should provide on a loan so it will be applicable to banks only yes or no because banks are registered they are working under rbi now you must be knowing that some Private public is also giving loan to their family members and their relatives. Now, will the interest rate of RBI will be applicable to this private people who are giving loan? Not at all. They will charge the interest rate whatever they like. Yes or no? So that private people who are giving loan, they will be known as unorganized sector because over which the rules and regulation of government is not applicable. Whereas the banks are known as an organized sector because they need to work according to the government norms. If we see the progress of this organized sector after privatization, then almost in all the sector there is increase. See, you just see this column. There is increase in every sector. We have taken five sectors. The first sector is manufacturing sector. But you just remember that we have taken 1993-94 as a base year when the privatization was totally in a geared up position. From 1993-94 means it is a base year that year is taken as 100. So from 2002 and 3 there is increase of 89 percentage. You can say like this that is 189. So there is increase of 89. And in 2006-7, there is an increase of 268. Now, if you compare with this two, 2006-7 and 2002-3, then there is a total increase of 179 only. You need not to compare with 1993 and 94. Only compare with this first and uh, sorry, this two column, 2002-3 and 2006-7. So, 268 minus 189, it will be 79 similarly in capital goods also there is increase of 136.8 point in consumer goods there is increase of 87.3 points and in ready-made clothes there is increase of 94.7 points and in chemical and related product there is increase of 91.6 points see there is in every sector there is an increase means after privatization the growth of organized sector is very good we haven't seen any negative means any decrease in these sectors now development of business and industries in unorganized sector see which are unorganized sector over which the rules and regulation of government is not applicable that is what written here sector which is not regulated by the rules and regulation of government it includes hawkers retail traders lari walas artisans and many others who do not have any specific line of trade you just take an example of pani puri wala you just even imagine that they will be registered with government no not at all when they wish to have a business of pani puri they will start the business of pani puri now 
suppose in monsoon the pani puri is not sold off they will change the business they will start selling umbrella so there is no specific line of business in one month they are doing one business in second month they are doing second business and in 12th month they are all together doing a different business means in one business they are not continuing then it is known as unorganized sector definitely the people who are doing business on a road side on a footpath by uh, on a footpath when they are selling this are known as unorganized sector the hawkers retail traders lari walas and artisan artisan simply means artists but those kind of artists who are you know handloom business you know handicraft business then it is known as artisans you know that in kutch and uh, uh, some of the areas of rajasthan the very good handicraft work is done so they are doing hand hand art work on their own and selling in a market but they are so much scattered in the area that no one has recognized it even government doesn't know how many artisans are there in the kutch and in rajasthan who are doing this handicraft activity Yes or no? So these are known as unorganized sector. Due to liberalization and privatization, their activities have also proliferated. Means their activity has also increased. They get credit facility easily on a liberal terms. Due to this, there is a development of unorganized sector. You know that after nineteen ninety one, even government has given freedom to enter. You know. enter in a banking sector we are also having private banks and you must be having experience that uh, private banks calling most of the time that if you are in need of loan we are ready to give you loan so just because of private sector loan and credit facility is easily available even when you are going to the mall for purchasing any capital goods like refrigerator is there uh, tv is there then uh, in a same counter just few steps ahead from that counter you will find any financial like bajaj financier is there who will ask you that if you are if you wish to purchase this tv but if you don't afford don't mind we will give you credit facility later on you just pay back to us so due to this privatization that private people entered into banking area which results into excess of credit facility by any people and due to excess of credit facilities this small workers like artisans and lari walas they have also taken loan from the private banks and they have started their business and they too have developed their business to a great extent earlier they were not uh, stable in one line of business but just because of access to this banking facility they can have a longer existence in a particular line of business now they are not changing their business now and then so that shows the development of unorganized sector due to privatization here our topic of privatization got over and by that way we have completed two component of lpg policy that is liberalization and privatization thank you very much from next lecture we will discuss globalization